Because the amount of requests I've had to explain this this week, I'm going to do a video on GMP, what it means and how you deal with it in your business. So if you need to know this, keep watching. Right, so hopefully you can hear me okay. Um, I thought I'd do a video about GMP because it's becoming more relevant to people all over the world at the moment. If you make cosmetics anywhere, whether it be in a manufacturing facility or at home, you have to comply to GMP. GMP stands for Good Manufacturing Processes. Um, I will look over there because I have notes because I don't want to forget anything. Um, so, so first on the list is premises and equipment. You have to make sure that your premises is suitable for manufacturing cosmetics and that your equipment is also suitable and that both are maintained to a high standard, both in terms of the equipment working properly and everything being clean and hygienic. First of all, that it's cleaned thoroughly before and after you manufacture any cosmetics. The second being that it has adequate ventilation and lighting. Another thing to consider would be uh, electric points. If you can manage to plug things in easily, that there's no trip hazards, you don't want any wires crossing over the floor when you're gonna be walking back and forth. And also, make sure you check the voltage of anything you're using. Some things can't be plugged into splitters or uh, extension cords. They'll need to be plugged directly into uh, the plug socket on the wall. So check that before you formulate. Make sure you keep pets and children out of your work area and that you are cleaning with proper cleaning product. Basically you want to make sure that when you make cosmetics they're only made in a clean, well lit, well ventilated area, free of pets and children and make sure that all of your equipment and your area is thoroughly cleaned and everything is working properly. So that's premises and equipment in a nutshell. The next thing is personnel. If it's just you, obviously you know what you need to be doing for your business to make your products. But if you have employees or anyone that helps you, you need to make sure that they know all of the procedures that you have in place. This is for cleaning, where things are stored, how to make your products, and also any safety information they need to know in case anything got in someone's eye or they spilt anything. All of that needs to be written down and you need to have clear procedures in place that the person working with you knows in case any of any eventuality, basically. This also includes PPE, so they need to know what to wear. So obviously gloves, I'm actually making some wax melts at the moment. So although not cosmetics, I do still wear gloves. So gloves, a respirator, face mask, goggles, anything like that and they need to be made aware of and need to have a good stock of and then be easily accessible. Then we move on to production processes. So this is how you go about making your product in a hygienic and safe environment and how you keep track of that. So in the UK we have what's called as a, a PIF, a product information file, and this is all the information about our product. I'd say even if you're not in the UK, it's good practice. So you have all your MSDS sheets, all your allergen sheets, all your fragrance documentation, everything about all your ingredients. You have your batch sheet, you have your recipe, and then you have your method, exactly how you make it and make it as thorough as possible so that anyone following it will know exactly how to make your product if you're not there. You need to have good scales. In the UK, we need trade approved scales. 
uh, this means that they're calibrated and come with a certificate um, you can get these online there's a good company in the UK called Country Scales and also Adam Scales are very good they'll measure from quite high down to sort of 0.01 or 0.001 of a gram and you need that kind of accuracy when you're formulating. Um, when you're writing your recipes, you need to write them down accurately with the formula in the correct weights. You should be keeping a sample of at least one container of any product that you make from any batch and keep this stored safely, labelled and free of contamination. And this is your control. This way, if you have any issues with any products from any customers, you can go directly to that batch and refer to the sample of that batch that you have to see how that is faring. And that will help you determine whether it was customer error or something to do with your formula. If it's something to do with your formula, you can refer to your ingredients supplier and all of your ingredients to track down that issue, which takes us neatly to batches and records. When you receive ingredients in the post, any supplies that have a use by date or just a sort of period after opening, you need to be making a note of when you received them. So what I do is I get a little label printer and I'll print out a little waterproof label that has the date that I received that product. So as of that date, it was unopened. Once that date is on it, it's considered opened and the period after opening then starts applying. That way, any time I pick up that product, I know exactly when I received it, so I know how long it's been open for. You also need to make sure that when you are creating your batches uh, of your recipe or your formula, you need to note the batch number of the ingredients that you're using. This is for traceability purposes. So again, if someone has an issue, you know exactly what ingredients from what batch have gone into that product. That way, if you need to contact the supplier, it's a lot easier to trace what's gone wrong. You also need to give every batch that you make of your product a batch number. This is different from the product number. So when you first make a product and it has a formula of certain ingredients, you give that a product number. This is associated with the formula. When you make a batch of that product, you give it a different number and that changes with every batch, but the formulation number still stays the same. You need to maintain stock control, so you need to keep track of your inventory of both your ingredients and your products. Um, you can do this via your website manually on a spreadsheet, or I actually like to use CraftyBase. Um, it's a database which links lots of things up together and it just makes your life so much easier. It does cost a bit of money, but I do recommend it, not an affiliate. All documents that you produce must be kept for 10 years after you make the product and you must store that in your product information file and that's kept safe. You can keep a copy electronically and I also like to keep a printed copy as well and that needs to be accessible quickly by trading standards or anyone else official asking for it. Next is storage. Ingredients need to be kept stored safely depending on their individual needs. So some ingredients need to be stored in dark containers, some ingredients need to be locked away in a cabinet because they're hazardous, some ingredients need to be stored high up away from floor level, some ingredients need to be stored in the fridge. If they need to be stored in the fridge you need to make sure you have a dedicated cosmetics fridge and it's not next to food in your normal kitchen fridge. You need to keep them out of the way of pets and children and out of direct sunlight. Just follow the guidance on the bottles and also make sure you are doing an inventory of your products and getting rid of anything past its use by date when you need to. You also need to take note of responsible discard of your ingredients, both empty bottles and anything that's expired. Some ingredients can go in normal waste because they're not hazardous, but if they're hazardous, such as fragrance oils, some preservatives, 
um, bits and pieces like that, it will say on the bottle, you need to get a hazardous waste collection. What I do is I have hazardous waste boxes which are fully sealed and they sit in my work area until they're full and then I'll book a hazardous waste collection. This does cost a bit of money, unfortunately, um, but it's the only way to do it because these products can't enter general waste or the water system. And lastly, just make sure uh, for this that everything is correctly labelled. You want everything identifiable. If any labels are damaged by liquid or the contents, you need to make sure that at the moment that they are damaged, you are replacing them with a waterproof label or keeping that information somewhere else because you need to be able to identify everything that you have in your lab. Next is packaging and labelling for your products. So um, first of all, we've got packaging is suitable for contents. So you, if something's light sensitive, you want a dark bottle. Um, you don't want to be putting things for use in the bath uh, in containers that are gonna degrade or that could smash easily, for instance. You need to make sure that everything is labeled correctly as per regulations with all of the information that's required. I do have another video on that if you want to watch that, I'll link that below. You need to have procedures in place for quality control. Because you have your documents stating how you make your products, you need to make sure that anyone else making those products does not deviate from your recipe. So it's always made exactly the same to the same hygiene standards with the same ingredient amounts every time. You need to make sure that there is a batch number and if someone else is making that batch, then their name needs to be on the batch so that you can refer to them if there's any issues later on so that you know exactly what they did. If a batch is unsuitable for sale, then it needs to be disposed of in the correct way. I would usually put them in a hazardous box, even if it's not hazardous, because cosmetics really shouldn't be thrown in normal waste. And lastly, we have complaints. You need to have a complaints procedure and you need to report any issues to the correct authorities. So the reason we have a PIF is so that we can refer to the MSDS documents and send them when they're needed. So if someone has an issue with a product or they get it in their eye, you need to make that SDS sheet accessible to the people that are helping them. That's why you need to be contactable very easily. Then you also need to keep a record of any complaints, no matter how small. If you, hopefully you won't get any, but if you do, it's a good idea to have a spreadsheet. And when you get a complaint, just note down the date that you got the complaint, the product that it was a complaint about, what the complaint was, how you resolved it, and also make a record of the batch number that was being complained about. If it's a big issue, you can look into it further. If it's just a little issue that gets resolved, then that's great. You can just tick resolved, but make sure you write exactly what happened because you will need a record of that if you're ever asked in the future. And that's basically it for GMP. You need to take all of those things that you create for your business, all of these procedures, and put them in a statement and then sign it. And that statement goes in your product information file and it will just sit there. And as long as you follow your own procedures and keep up with them, especially the hygiene, then you're absolutely fine. And just be prepared that trading standards or somewhere might come and visit your premises at some point in time to see how you're doing and check that you are following these procedures. But really, most of it's common sense. You should be practicing good hygiene if you're selling cosmetic products to people. So just follow your own procedures and you'll be absolutely fine. Any questions about GMP, then stick them below. Otherwise, please like and subscribe because it does mean a lot. Um, if you want more formulas and things and some more help and a bit of mentoring, I do that over on my Patreon. That is linked below as well. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.